This is Doris. I teach yoga at Planet Grande Belmont, Sunnyvale, and Santa Clara. Thank you for joining me this morning at 7 a.m. for a live core yoga conditioning class. I also want to introduce you to Ian, who will be assisting me with this class today. Hey guys. So, let me tell you a little bit about the structure of this class. We'll begin with five minutes of breath work, pranayama, and then move into 40, 45 minutes of stagnant and dynamic positions to center, rebalance, and strengthen our core. We'll finish the class with more breath work. Let's take a moment to define core. If we didn't have legs, arms, and head, that is our 360 core. We will focus on the core stability muscles such as the hip flexors, the lats, and abs to improve our range of motion, core strength, stability, and functional movement so that you can do what you love to do for the rest of your life pain-free. We'll be using several props and we want to maximize feedback and increase core stability. Let's begin by setting up our props. You need two blocks, two six inch balls, a yoga strap, or a half inch resistance band. With the yoga strap, if you didn't have one, you can use a belt. And let's go ahead and create a loop and make sure it's cinch and allow it to be hip bone to hip bone, hips width. And with resistance band, you want to set it up as well. So this is a 10 to 35 pound resistance band. What you want to do with the resistance band is you're going to hold it with one hand. You're going to create a twist, a small twist, a loop, and place that loop in your hand. And so now you have a small loop and a big loop. With the bigger loop, you're going to create another twist and you're going to place it in your hand. And now you have a strand of three, providing you with enough resistance, hips width, and we'll put that aside as well, and we'll use it in just a little bit. And if you didn't have blocks, you can use a book. And if you didn't have balls, you can use anything that provides enough compression where you place between your legs and you provide um, some feedback. So we'll be using the ball and the block in just a little bit. What I like to do right now is um, have you engage in the breath work that we talked about earlier. And I would like you to start with a lying down position so that you can settle into the breath. So if you can take your block right now, and we're gonna come into Sutta Padasana, which is lying down mountain pose. You're gonna place the block in your knee, and you're gonna go narrow with the block so that you can create a compression and what we're trying to do in this position is to stabilize the pelvis and kind of check in. So as we're doing this, you're gonna allow your legs to be nice and strong, tree trunk legs, pull the toes in the direction of your nose with the palms face up. And then now, as we're relaxing into this position, we're gonna take a breath. And it's gonna be a normal breath, inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the nose and then we'll start engaging a breath which we call ocean breath ujjayi breath and it sounds like the ocean and to create that breath you're going to want to open your mouth the size of a walnut and you it's like fat fogging your glasses so you can do that by placing your hand at the mouth if you like and just take a nice inhale through the nose and then on the exhale go open your mouth and go Good. And then now try it on the inhale. And then now see if you could do it with the mouth closed. I'm going to take five Ujjayi breaths right here as we're lying down, compressing into the block. Inhaling and exhaling. 
And this has an immediate calming effect. It activates the parasympathetic nervous system. So taking a few more cycles here, inhaling and exhaling. Feel free to close the eyes. Settle into the breath. And settle into this moment. And with each successive breath, find yourself falling deeper and deeper and deeper within yourself. And just be here with the breath. Feel free to maintain the Ujjayi breath or let the breath come back to normal. And now draw attention to the physical body. And as we create center and balance, go ahead and pull your toes in the direction of your nose, maintain that line, and feel your legs as if they're tree trunk legs. As you continue to compress into the block, on the exhale, squeeze into your belly button without flattening your lower back. And as you draw attention to the block, continue to squeeze into the block and see if you could feel both butt cheeks, glutes, equally pressing into the floor. And then as you feel that pressure right around the hips, go ahead and compress into the block and give me 60 compressions so that you can actually start engaging right down the center line and allowing the energy to move from the crown of your head, through your throat, through your heart, through your belly, all the way to your perineum. So as you compress 60 times, it's gonna draw that energy right down the center, creating balance. So take 10 more nice, easy compressions here get into 60 and once you reach 60 you're going to go ahead and bend your knees bring the bottom of your feet to the floor and just go ahead and take a breath here allowing the body to relax into the position and what we're going to do now is find yourself putting pressure or building the engagement of your glutes. You're going to remove the block, take your ball in hand, place it at your inner ankle, right over here, and you're going to now take your resistance band, or if you don't have the resistance band, use your yoga strap, and if you don't have either, you can use a belt. So as you place the band that's already looped through your legs, go ahead and slide the band one inch above your knees. Keep the ball right at your canis bone, inner ankle. And as you're lying down, lift your glutes about 10 inches up and push out into the band simultaneously. There's no pressure in the neck and shoulder. Remember the core is from your armpit towards your hip, that's where the pressure you, is um, going to be placed in this position. So as you lift up with the palms face up, pushing out into the band, making sure your ankle bone is right underneath your knee bone. So you're gonna walk your ankles right underneath. And then as you put pressure into the ball and push out into the band, you're going to breathe. You're going to pull into your belly. You're going to take your nice Ujjayi breath or normal breath. Inhale and exhale. And we'll be here for about a minute, taking 10 nice easy breaths. Inhale and exhale. And with each exhale, you'll want to squeeze into your belly button without 
pulling pressure into your lower back. You want to simultaneously push out into your band. And what you're waiting for is gravity and pressure to start the glutes to engage. And you want the glutes to be equally engaged. So now that we've been here for about a minute, you should feel a burning sensation right here in your glutes versus the outside of your hips. If you're feeling in the outside of your hips, pull in through your belly button, put the pressure into the heel, and wiggle your toes and see if you can feel more pressure in the glutes. Now go ahead and lower your hips until they're halfway down. Squeeze into your abdominal wall, push out into the van, and we're gonna create dynamic movement with your hips and your glutes. So go ahead and now lift back up as you squeeze into the glutes. We're gonna do that for 10 cycles. Inhale, lowering down. Exhale, pushing it back up, squeezing into your abs. And just continue for 10 nice, easy cycles. And what we're trying to do is set the body up for success. We're going to turn on dead muscle tissue, put pressure in underused area of the body, shift pressure from overuse area of the body, like perhaps your IT band, your joints, and put pressure in the core. So go ahead and continue until you reach 10 cycles of up and down, using the glutes, the legs, your abs, and pulling in through that belly. It's important. Good. And I think you're almost there, right, Ian? Ten. Okay. And once you've done 10 of these, you'll feel a burning sensation in the glutes. So what we're trying to do here today is turn jello into jello and get you some glute action here. The glutes are important because the glutes work with your hip flexor muscles. And the hip flexors, if balanced, if fully engaged, can generate six times your body weight energy. And that's what we're trying to achieve here, to build and increase your body potential. So once you're done with the glutes, you're going to draw your knees towards your chest and place the ball between your knees. If you don't have a ball, again, you can use a block instead. You're going to squeeze into the ball or the block, open your ankle wider than hips width, wider than your knees, flex your feet, pull in the direction of your nose, Turn your big toe towards each other and squeeze into your abdominal wall. And you're going to hold this position until you can feel the burning sensation at the pelvis, at the hip flexors. So as you hold this position and breathe, once you can feel the pressure right at the hip flexors versus the outside of your hips, you're going to compress, again, 60 compression. Why do we want 60 compressions? It takes about a minute before your nervous system reaches a response from your muscles. Some of us will take a little longer, some of us shorter, but we're gonna to try to just stimulate that area, engage it so that we can get it ready for movement, dynamic movement. So as you compress 60 times into that um, ball or block, you're gonna start feeling the burn right at the hips, right in this area. And perhaps you might also feel your adductor muscles starting to work as well. So, continue to breathe for 60 cycles. Once you've done 60, you're gonna keep the ball where it is, you're gonna pull into your belly, and we're gonna just now connect the hip flexors to your obliques. So bring your arms in T position or cactus, squeeze into your abdominal wall, lower your knees to your right side, 45 degree, all the while squeezing into the ball, opening your ankles a little bit wider than your knees, turn your big toe towards each other, and then 
as you lower the knees to your right side, take your left rib cage right here and just squeeze the left rib into your pelvis and really feel your left oblique starting to work. Okay? Just like this, crushing it in. And you're gonna hold this for how long? 10 cycles of breath, nice and easy. Okay? And equal part inhale, equal part exhale. Once you reach 10 cycles on this side, you're gonna move to the other side. So as you squeeze into your belly button and Squeeze into the ball, pulling in through your abs. Go ahead and bring it all the way back. Compress into the ball. Again, hold it there. Make sure your ankles are wider than your knees. Make sure your toes are turned in. Moving to the other side, lowering the knees 45 degrees. You don't have to go all the way down. Turning your gaze the opposite side. Go ahead and now take the pressure from your rib cage and squeeze into your pelvis, and you can start feeling the oblique starting to work on your right side now. And as you squeeze into the obliques, pull into your belly button, and you can start feeling the whole abdominal wall starting to work. Squeeze into the ball, don't forget the hip flexors, and allowing the breath to really help calm the nervous system, even though you're fully engaged in your uh, muscle, core muscles, core stability muscles. Go ahead and now, after you've taken 10 cycles of breath, you're gonna come all the way back. And then lowering your feet to the floor, taking a breath here nice and easy. So that whole area is all fired up. You're ready to come out of this position. So go ahead and remove your ball. And I'm gonna take the band off of your knees right now. And you're gonna find yourself in tabletop position. You're gonna use the block. You're gonna place it right at the inner ankle. You're gonna go wide with the block. And then from there, you're gonna lower your elbows, I mean, you lower your palms to the floor, not elbows yet. Wrist is underneath your shoulders. Knees is underneath your hips. We're gonna move into a few cat cows. So the block is a spacer. It gives you an estimate of where your leg should be. As you come into a cow position, mid back towards the floor, pecs or chest extending forward, shoulder away from your ear, spreading your finger, moving into cat, rounding your back, tucking in your belly button. And then again, coming into cow, inhale. And exhale, nice and easy. One more, cow, and cat, good. Pause in cow position. What we wanna do is see if you can really feel your hip flexors, your core stability muscles. So I'm gonna give you a few cues while you're here. You're gonna go ahead and squeeze into your abdominal wall, mid back, towards the floor, shoulder away from your ear. And you're gonna visualize a horse right underneath you. You're gonna squeeze into your horse's saddle to activate these hip flexors. And as you squeeze into your horse's saddle, pulling the shoulder away from your ear, feeling these hip flexors, you're gonna keep those hip flexors working the whole time. Go ahead and lower your elbow and forearm and reach for your ball, hold on to your ball, and go ahead and compress into the ball with the palm of your hand. Bring your forehead onto the ball, making sure your chin is not tucked in and is aiming towards the floor. Keep pulling the shoulder away from your ear and breathe. We're coming into a position that will really activate your hips. So, as you breathe, engaging these hip flexors, six times your body weight, stabilizing your core, we're gonna now activate your lats right down either side of your spine. As you press your palm into the ball and pull into your belly, 
you're still riding your horse, you're still squeezing your legs into that horse, you're going to push your shin down and give a little bit more pressure into your legs, and then as you take at least 10 cycles of breath here, you're going to start feeling the musculature along either side of your spine. Continue to pull your armpit towards your hip, and as you press into the ball, you're going to start feeling the lats and also the serratus muscle right here. And this area of the body is responsible for your range of motion in your arms. So as climbers, it is very important that we actually create strength balance in this area of the body so that when we pull ourselves up and when we hold we're not tearing our shoulders we're actually pulling up through the core and being able to lift our entire body weight with our very strong core stability muscles once you can feel the muscles on either side of the spine and also the serratus muscle, go ahead and give me 60 pulses into the center line, the midline. And you're gonna start engaging the left, the right, the top, and the bottom of your body, front and back. And once you've done 60 compressions, I'm gonna have you come back out of the position, do a few cat cows, and then we're gonna start working the abdominal wall, okay? But we've got to make sure that we have the hip flexors working, the glutes engaged, the lats here all balanced out and working. Then we can actually start on our abs. So once you're done with 60 compressions into the ball, into your midline, pulling into your belly, shoulder away from your ear, and feeling the burn right in the core. That's how you know you're actually working muscles versus putting pressure in joints. Once you've done 60, come to tabletop, do a few cat cows again, making sure your wrist is underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips. Cat and cow, nice and easy. Cat and cow. One more, cat and cow. Excellent. You're going to go ahead and now grab your ball, place it right at your knee, and we're going to make sure that these muscles here are really, really fired up. And to do that, we're going to come into a modified plank position. You're going to place your wrist underneath your shoulders. You're going to come into cow position. So. A lot of us tend to pull the shoulder towards the ear and put a lot of pressure in our shoulder joint. What we want to do is pull it back. Remember what I said about these muscles right here, creating stability and your hip flexors. As you pull it back, what you want to do also, I had you press into the ball. You can actually feel these muscles, which I call, you know, the armpit muscles. <laughs> but what you want to do is now, since you don't have a ball up there, you're still going to create that tension. You're going to squeeze your arms together as if your mat is split in half and you want to actually um, glue your mat back together. So go ahead and do that. And then as you now squeeze into that imaginary horse, but now you're squeezing the ball, you're going to now lift your shins up, squeeze into the ball, keep your chest aiming towards the floor, pulling the armpit towards your hip. You're going to lean forward just enough until you can start feeling the burn with straight arms. Once you can feel the burn right in the lats, you can just hold that and feel that burn. And if you don't feel the burn, you just hold it a little bit longer and maybe keep pulling the shoulder away from your ear. Once you feel the burn right here and right at your armpits, squeezing your mat together, go ahead and bend your elbows, maybe an inch, maybe a little bit more, but keep pulling the shoulder towards your knee, okay? Not out, bring it in, there you go. Visualize a ball underneath your armpit and just squeeze into that ball and hold this position and hold it for as many breaths as you can, maybe 
you know, it's one today. Maybe it's two, maybe it's more. But you want to feel equal pressure, feeling the burn, increasing muscle tissue strength right here, activating it. And then once you're done feeling that burn, you can push it straight up. There we go. So now you have that burn. And those that want to do this for several more cycles, you can just hold. Others may be at a level where they can actually do compressions and do 10 really good push-ups where there's no pressure in your wrist joint, elbow joint, shoulder joint. All the pressure is right here in your lats, your hips, and your abdominal wall. Nice job, Ian. Okay. And then now let's go ahead and lower the feet back to the floor. I'm going to do that again and just do a few cat cow just to reset. So cat and cow, nice and easy. Make sure your wrist is underneath your shoulder. That's very important, okay? To not to put too much pressure on one area of the body. Just redistributing pressure and mainly putting pressure in your core is critical to the health of your body to avoid injuries. So once you come into a few cat cows, pause in cow position again. And we're just going to up the ante now. So you're going to pull the shoulder away from your ear. You're going to keep squeezing into the ball, your horse's saddle. If you don't have a ball, visualize a ball. Turn your toe under. Turn your toe under. You don't need the block, but if you want to squeeze in a block, you can. Go ahead and now squeeze the ball between your knees and lift your knee one inch up. Nothing is shift. Hold. You're still squeezing the ball between your knees. You're still pulling your shoulder away from your ear. You're still squishing into the imaginary split in your mat. And shoulder away from your ear. And really tilt your pelvis up and squeeze that ball. And this is where the strength comes from. Not from your joints, but all from here. And then now if you bend your elbows, you can push it back up. There's your push up right there. Go ahead and now. Pull it back, elbows in, there, and push it back up. Good. And you can do 10 of those, nice and easy. Um, or just do one and just feel how the strength is growing in your body. And once you've done 10 of those, you lower the knees and breathe. Good. I'm going to have you shift back into extended puppy. So go ahead, top of your foot on the mat. Keep your block right at your inner ankle. Remove your ball and take a breath or two here. Okay? Good. And this is extended puppy right here. The buttocks is still tilted up. The arms are extended. And you're not putting pressure in your neck and shoulder. So you want to lift through your armpits a little bit. And you want to still squeeze into an imaginary horse and really feel the hips working. Good. And now we're going to up the ante on extended puppy. We're going to turn on all the musculature in your arms. So what we're going to do here is have you hold on to two balls in extended puppy. So you're going to come back into that position. You're going to lengthen your spine. And if you don't have two balls, you can still do the same thing. But what you're trying to do is not sink into the shoulder joints the elbow joint and the wrist joint. So you want to have straight arm, no bend in the elbow. Unless you hyperextend in your elbow, you will micro bend those elbows, okay? And then as you straighten the arm, pull into your belly, crank through your hips, and put pressure in the palm of your hand versus grabbing the ball and then bending the wrist. You do not want to bend the wrist. You want to now build all the musculature down your arms. This is very good for those that actually sink into the elbow, overuse their biceps. We're going to try to turn out your triceps. So as you push down and try to feel the balance between both arms, you're going to relax your head, you're going to lift your armpit, and you're going to breathe. And once you can feel the musculature turning on, uh, some of you will hyperextend, and some of you will have the elbows slightly bent and the wrist slightly bent. Keep an eye on that and see if you could just put pressure in the palm of your hand and then squeeze into your abdominal wall 
and come up maybe an inch and using the musculature right in the lats, the hips, and then connecting your serratus to your triceps and breathe. Good. And just take 10 more cycles here and feel free to use a ujjayi breath. Inhale and exhale. And I'm just going to join Ian here for one to two more cycles of breath here. And just feeling the pressure in my core, building that core strength, which is six times your body weight, taking pressure out of your joints, and just feeling really good here. Go ahead and now press into the palm of your hand and bring your trunk all the way up, bring your chest up, tilt your butt, keep your arms nice and straight, stick your chest towards the wall that's in front of you, breathe, keep your arms straight, keep your wrists straight, don't bend the wrists, right there, that's the musculature we're working on, pulling in through your belly, and really tilting your glutes up and bringing your chest slightly down, good, and then let's go ahead and walk the balls back, and do a few cat cows here with the ball underneath your hands. Cat, and cow. Good, nice and easy. Good. So now that we have all the musculatures turned on, right in the hip flexors, the glutes, the lats, range of motion in your arms, go ahead and just move your arms and see how they feel now, and see if there's more range of motion. And just do a circular motion around your arm, one direction, whoops, <laughs> and then the other, and just feel that. There's more range right now, okay? And what we're gonna do now is come back on our back before we create movement in a standing position. I'm gonna have you use your resistance band, and if you don't have resistance band, that's perfectly fine. You're gonna go ahead and take your resistance band, and you're gonna create a harness with the resistance band. You're going to place it all the way around your waist, just like so. And then, coming on your back, you're going to place it on your knee, just like so. Okay? And, as you lie down, you're going to go ahead and let the palms face up. You're going to place your right heel on top of your left kneecap. Making sure your right knee doesn't splay out. It aims for the center line. As you push down into that left leg, feel your right hip flexor starting to work. Then you're gonna draw your left knee towards you. This position I call is clamshell. As you compress the two legs together, what you're doing in this position is again, creating balance, strength in your hip flexors, releasing tension in your IT band. And as you take 10 cycles of breath, compressing into this clamshell, you're gonna hold on to that center right there. Visualize a clamshell. It's got this beautiful pearl right in the center. You're gonna keep that pearl for yourself right here, okay? So go ahead and just squeeze in. Once you've done 10 cycles of breath here, you're gonna switch and if you have time, if it feels good, you can also do 60 compression. But today, for this group class, I'm just going to, or live class, I'm going to just have you do 10 cycles of breath, and then we'll switch to the other side, okay? So again, you're gonna push pressure into the kneecap, or put pressure into the hips, actually. And pushing down into the kneecap, you're gonna feel it in that left hip flexor now. Once you do, you're gonna bring that Right knee towards you, making sure that left knee doesn't splay out. It aims right towards the center. And then continue to engage in your normal breath or feel free to use your jaya breath to calm the nervous system while engaging core stability muscles. And what you're doing in this position is releasing pressure right now on your IT band. And you're gonna, again, take nice and easy breaths. You're gonna squeeze into your belly button on the exhale, and you're gonna release after 10 cycles of breath, okay? 
Once you've done 10 cycles of breath and release, I'm gonna have you take your right ankle over left thigh to figure four, okay? And what we're trying to do in this position now is take pressure out of your piriformis. We tend to overuse this muscle right here as opposed to using our glutes. So the piriformis is a small muscle that really um, thinks it's a glute, but it's not, okay? <laughs> so what we wanna do is open, and we wanna wait until you don't feel a pull right here. And it's important for you to feel the opposing muscle right on the side. You wanna feel your left hip flexor anchoring you down as you stretch your right piriformis and your right um, IT band as well, okay? And once you feel the release, you're gonna switch to the other side, okay? Okay. And then as you pull the right knee in the direction of your right armpit, you're gonna open that right knee using your right hip flexor, opening your left knee, excuse me, and feeling the release of your left piriformis. Once you don't feel that pull and that stretch happening and all you feel is the musculature on your right hip, you can come out of that position. Good. So now we're gonna make sure that the pelvis is engaged, everything is balanced. You're gonna take a ball, place it between your knees one more time and you're just gonna squeeze into the ball and open your ankle, toes point towards each other, big toes. Squeeze into those hip flexors, and all is good. Good. So let's go ahead and now lower the feet all the way to the floor. And what we're going to do now is really continue the process of strengthening our hip flexors, our center line. So you're going to come up to a standing position, or squat actually. So go ahead and rock forward and remove the ball, hold it in your hand. You can keep your band on. If you don't have a band, you don't need a band. So come all the way up, and you're gonna set yourself up by using three blocks, and I'm gonna have Ian face this direction. And you're gonna create a chair for yourself. And as Ian sits in his chair, oops, let me get a little higher. You can actually use a chair if you don't have a chair. Right there. Good. And you're gonna place the ball right between your knee, and you're gonna lift your rib cage, and you're gonna bring your hands behind your head, and you're gonna sit. And as you balance the head over the heart, you're gonna tilt your pelvis slightly back, you're gonna squeeze into your abdominal wall, and then you're gonna squeeze into the ball. And if you don't have a ball, again, you can use a pillow, or any object that allows you to compress in. And if you don't have any object whatsoever, just keep your knees together. You're gonna to place the second ball right at your inner ankle. Good. And so now Ian is feeling his lats, his hips, and maybe his abdominal wall. But as he compresses into the ball, he's gonna start feeling the adductor muscles. And then as he presses canis bone into the ball, he might even feel his glutes. He might even feel his soleus and maybe his tibialis anterior or posterior? Anterior. Anterior, okay? So go ahead and now interlace your hand in front of you. We're gonna start creating movement. So go ahead and bring your hands in front, interlace, lift your rib cage, and you're gonna come out of this seated position using your hip flexors. And you're gonna come up maybe an inch off right there. Good. And this is simulate chair. If you were in an office chair, this is what you will be sitting and coming up and down using the correct musculature. So you're gonna lower the hip one inch and you're gonna do 10 cycles of up and down. So ready? Up, you don't have to sit back down. One, down, and up. Two, lock your arms. Three, 
and I'm going to join him. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And sit. As you rest, bring your hands behind your head. Take three cycles of breath. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, exhale. One more. Inhale, exhale. Bring your hands back. Interlace. Use your hip flexors, core stability muscle. Come back off of your block or your chair. Pull into your belly. Lift your heel. One, two, look up, three, squeeze a ball, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sit back down. Interlace your hand behind your head. Squeeze into the ball. Take big cycles of breath here. Three, nice and easy. Good. And then we're going to do heel up and rock it back and forth. It looks just like this, okay? Up and back. Up and back. So go ahead and come back up. Interlace your hand. And squeeze into the ball. Make sure your props are all sturdy. Inhale, heel up. Ball of your feet up. One, two, rock back and forth. Three, four, five, six, seven, Chair pose, 
is really to help all those folks like me who sit a lot. And what we're trying to do is sit properly so that um, we can preserve our joints and not sink into it. So as you sit here with the band across your knee, go ahead and open it hips width. Bring your feet um, maybe two inches wider than your knees or wider than your hips. And make sure that your heel or the outside edge of your feet are parallel. So straight foot, okay, or straight feet. And then now, allow the hips to really start working as you press out into the band, you can interlace your hand, lift your rib cage, stick your glutes back, and as you press into your hand, arm straight, start feeling the muscles from your armpit, remember the serratus muscle, lift your rib cage and feel your lats, and then continue to keep your chest up, push out into the band until your knees are in line with your ankle, third toe. Keep pushing out into the band. So knee, right there, patella, right? All the way down. All right? And then now, as you push out, you should still feel, the, you should start feeling the burn right at the hip flexors, and maybe your glutes, so wiggle your toes, and keep pushing out. Right there, breathe. Keep wiggling your toes. And now, come off, off of your block, with the knees as wide as your feet. Right there. Stick your butt back. Breathe. There we go. And now, keep opening at the knee as wide as your ankle. Right there. Don't let it go wider, okay? Middle toes track the middle of your knee. Open, open, open. Now keep that width as you slowly strain your legs. Don't let the knees come in. Inch by inch, push out into the band. Wiggle your toes. Lift your rib cage. Press into the palm of your hand and come all the way up. At the top, squeeze into your hips, lift your rib cage. And now, from there, one. Push out into the band. Up, two, three, four, five, six, smile, seven, Eight, nine, and ten. Good. Sit back down. Go ahead and remove your band. And remove your block to the side. Good. And now we're ready for movement. So let's apply everything that we just learned into a flow sequence. So as you move the block and the ball, let's come to the top of your mat. And bring your hands in front of the heart in prayer, allowing the crown of your head to balance over your heart. As you inhale, bend your knees and bring the arms straight up in chair pose. Look up, lift your chest, feel the weight in your heel and your glutes and your hips. Hinge forward, step your right leg back, pause there, make sure that you can feel your left hip and your right leg is a tree trunk leg, just like you're squeezing that block. As you come all the way up, bring the arms up, from your rib cage, lats, bring your hands behind your head, balancing the crown of your head over your heart, interlace your hand behind your head, elbows wide, breathe, good. As you exhale, lower the hands, step back into a down dog position, micro bend your knees, let the heel come up as if you're a tiger about to jump moving into what I call crouching tiger. Remember how you felt stronger and more center when you squish your mat together as if the mat was about to split in half. Go ahead and do that now. 
Visualize a ball between your knees and just squeeze into that imaginary ball as you're about to jump. Hinge forward, making sure your shoulder stays above your wrist. Lock your arms, squeeze into your legs. Don't let the pelvis drop. Tilt it slightly up and push your armpit towards your hip. Remember how I had you lean slightly forward and you felt the burn in your lats? Go ahead and feel that now. Now pull into your belly. Bend your elbow one inch. Bend it another inch. Maybe another inch. But don't let the shoulder dip below your elbows. Go ahead, squeeze into your abs. Strong legs, tilt your butt up. Feel the burn in your hips. Breathe, and then push it back up. Shift back into a down dog position to crouching tiger. Step your right foot forward. Crescent, hold that. Feel your hip flexors. Inhale as you rise up. Tree trunk leg on the left side. Hands behind head. Crown your head, balance over your heart. Right there. Good. Feel that right hip flexor really kicking in. Put the weight in your right heel. Breathe. As you exhale, go ahead. Lower the hands. Step back into Crouching Tiger again. And go ahead and lower the knees into Extended Puppy. Take a breath or two here. Make sure not to sink into your elbows, into your shoulder joints. Stick your chest towards the front of the room or the opposite side of the wall. Squish your mat together. And now, with the core musculature working, go ahead and come into Crouching Tiger, turning your toe under and lifting up without coming up on your shoulder, from your shoulder. Good. And go ahead, bring it back slightly down. Go ahead and now push it back up. Bend your knees again. Inhale, and then exhale. Inhale, and exhale. Two more, nice and easy. Inhale, and exhale. Last cycle, inhale, exhale. Go ahead and lower the knees to the floor. Move into child's pose. Take a breath or two here. Cross your forearms or cross your palms. Let the forehead rest. Hmm. Let's find ourselves coming all the way up to seated for a moment. And I'm going to have you do a very quick hamstring stretch just so that we um, work the whole body. So you're going to lie down now, okay? And as you lie down, you're going to go ahead and squeeze a block or a ball between your legs. And you're going to bend your knees, squeeze into your hips. Take a resistance band or a yoga band and bring your legs straight up as you hold down to the resistance band and flex your feet, squeeze into the block and place the block or the ball right at your inner ankle and pull the toes in the direction of your belly button and if you had a wall you can actually bring legs up the wall and holding into this position. And you're going to try to feel the hip flexors working. You're going to lock your knees. You're going to feel the stretch in the back of your legs, your hamstrings. And what you're waiting for is that stretch to go away. And all you're going to feel is the musculature right down the front of your legs, right on the center and between your legs. And you're going to breathe nice and easy. Good. And keep the neck and shoulder relaxed. You're going to use your Ujjayi breath and keep squeezing into the ball or the block, bringing your big toe towards each other. 
I'm going to take at least two more cycles of breath here. Nice and easy, waiting for the hamstrings to release. All the while, you're using your core stability muscle to create that release, that opposing muscle release right there, okay? So go ahead and now bend your knees, release back down, good. Take the block to the side, take your band off of your foot, and I'm gonna have you now come up to seated position. And we're gonna now start our final uh, breath work. So you're gonna find yourself in a comfortable sit, either hero's pose or sitting on one to two blocks or as many blocks as you need. So for me, I can sit on two blocks. I can bring the bottom of my feet together, just like this. And instead of letting the knees collapse down, I want to pull in through the center so I have the strength of my um, center working, my core. And then I'm gonna have you bring your thumb and index fingers together in the Jhana Mudra. And I want you just to take a moment here now to balance the crown of your head, feel that energy through your throat, through your heart, through your belly, all the way to your perineum. And as you allow the thumb and index finger to join in the Jhana Mudra, connecting the individual soul with the universal soul, let's come back to the breath, the Ujjaya breath, the ocean breath. And I'm gonna have you take the least number of breaths in one minute. So I'm going to time that one minute. I'll let you know when one minute is up. And the Ujjayi breath again is the ocean breath constricting through the throat. And it sounds like this, an ocean breath. So go ahead and begin your Ujjayi breathing now. And take the least number of breaths in one minute to slow things down. And go ahead and feel free to close your eyes. That was one minute. You just stay at the top of your head. Keep the eyes, your gaze soft or closed. And just continue to settle in. And continue to draw in light through the crown of your head, through your throat, through your heart, through your belly all the way to your root chakra. And let this light heal you, soothe you, comfort you. And let this light cleanse you of all that does not serve you here today. I know all is well.
as you continue to settle into the breath and settle into this moment. And with each successive breath, find yourself falling deeper and deeper and deeper within yourself. And just be here with the breath. Soft, sweet, precious breath. Circle the arms, reach it towards the sky, gather up all the goodness and all the kindness in the world, bring it right to your heart center. And please join me in one round of OM as we send it back out into the world. So inhale together. Oh. a day and um, look for me again. I'll be back here for several more classes. So thank you so much. Have an awesome day. Love you all. Namaste.